Welcome to Public Affairs. Our special guest is Dr. Carlos Puente, a well-known international lawyer, an economic and political analyst, and a university professor. Thank you for your time, Dr. Puente. Thank you very much for inviting me to your program. The purpose of the program is to be able to inform and help our worldwide audience to better understand the economic situation in our country today. We will request Dr. Puente to explain, in a simple way, some of the economic terms that we hear often or read in the newspapers to help us prepare, hence to be able to survive any economic downturn. Well, Dr. Puente, you are an experienced economist, so it would be very, very informative and interesting for our audience to hear what you think about the current world economic situation. Well, uh, we are living in a global economy. That means that all countries are inter interconnected and its economies as well. So any macroeconomic uh, indicator in a, a, an important country has also effects in others. For instance, uh, growth, inflation, unemployment uh, rates in Germany will have an impact in France, German, uh, 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 Italy, Spain, and other European uh, countries. But it happens the same in the United States. In my opinion, last year, 2017 was a very positive uh, year, economic year for the United States, because all these indicators I mentioned uh, will have been improved. So that means that the uh, huge crisis we suffer are already almost over. I cannot say that it's completely because uh, this year, 2018, and the years to come must face other challenges very important that we have uh, survived. Mm -hmm. Well, most recently, Dr. Puente, we've been reading about and hearing about uh, the volatility in the stock market. What does this mean? How would you define volatility? Well, in fact, uh, we have to think that uh, uh, volatility is a fluctuation. Mm -hmm. And it's a fluctuation of the value of something, or a price, or the production. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's uh, the measure by uh, the average range of, uh, of such price for a certain period. So uh, what volatility in a stock market is the same concept, the same idea, the fluctuation of the value concerning uh, the fluctuation in, in stocks or securities. So when uh, uh, a trader uh, dealing with uh, stocks or securities uh, should know uh, what is the level of volatility to inform properly to uh, the public, to uh, the uh, uh, people who is a potential buyer of such products. Mm -hmm. Now, since you mentioned about traders, uh, is volatility good or bad from the investor's point of view? And another question, does market volatility actually provide numerous money-making opportunities? It's necessary to say that volatility means uh, a situation that is not secure is uh, uh, in at any time can change. So that means that volatility is good for some people, but is very bad for some other for a sector uh, that uh, is not very familiar with uh, the mechanism of such product. If somebody tried to uh, deal with uh, uh, stocks in the stock exchange market should know uh, very well how the market works and what is the possibility to make money. 
money from such volatility. If uh, anybody uh, is not very familiar with this kind of market, it's very risky to mm -hmm. go inside because nobody knows exactly where will go prices, high or down. And of course, uh, in some um, sectors, mm, there are opportunities. I try to change the stock exchange market into, for, in, for instance, another uh, sector. Let's say uh, the market of uh, uh, metals, of gold, of uh, 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 even the housing. So volatility is also very risky. It, it means that it depends of many other factors. The price of uh, the fluctuation of the price for gold depends on the production, not only on the demand and supply, but also um, depends from the economic policy of some governments. Mm -hmm. A lot of people try to invest in gold, and this decision has also a very important effect in the market of gold. So, for some people, means and volatility means opportunity, but for somebody else, it's not the same thing. Maybe uh, we'll commit some mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's it's very good that you're able to explain this in a in a manner that people can understand better, and that's the main uh, goal of this program. And that's good. I'm sure a lot of students who are listening, and even housewives and professionals who are working right now, are able to understand it better. Now, Doctor Puente, we also have been reading about the word bubble. So, what is a bubble in an economic cycle? Well, a bubble, uh, if we think, is something that uh, also can uh, uh, be destroyed suddenly. A bubble is uh, the rise in, in prices of a product or assets in general, which is, uh, in most cases, a very speculative venture. Mm -hmm. So we read in the past what has happened eh, with the bubble in the housing sector or even in the banking sector. This is very risky. A bubble in an economic cycle eh, is something that the economist know, knows from the past. It's very well known some very typical uh, cases of uh, bubble in history. For instance, in the 17th century, uh, uh, Dutch people import tulips from Turkey. So it was uh, uh, very popular, this kind of flowers from Turkey, and people start uh, buying a lot of uh, tulips, and they thought that to invest, buying tulips will be a good idea for the future, and they can make money. But uh, it was something uh, not realistic. It was a speculative situation. So uh, at, at the end of the period, uh, most people uh, had a lot of uh, uh, um, tulips, in fact, or uh, rights on tulips, but they lost a lot of money is a mechanism that is uh, old, but at the same time is very new as well. I'm sure that the audience uh, has heard about the Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. The Ponzi scheme mm -hmm. is also a, a, a fraudulent investment, eh, because uh, it's something that uh, is based on the product that uh, is offered to the public mm, and offering at the same time uh, to invest but uh, to get returned or to to get 
revenues uh, very high if you compare to other markets. For instance, if the interest rest, uh, uh, rate in banking system is by 2% and somebody is offering you to invest in a, in a special, very specific market of products uh, uh, and, and promise you to offer you by 12%, hmm, well, you have to, to be suspicious about it. So this is a typical case of a policy scheme since the, uh, the operator hmm, uh, uh, gives um, returns to the previous investor only using the money coming from the the most recent investors. So it's like a pyramidal uh, a, a pyramidal uh, business. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's very speculative and very risky because it depends upon the number of investors involved in this scheme. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Puente, again, what causes the bubble to burst? Well, uh, this is uh, for your audience to understand. Uh, I am sure that they are aware of the uh, this joke that when the music stops, uh, the music stops, and and uh, somebody cannot get uh, a seat. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So this is what what usually happens in a, a, a bubble. Uh, when uh, everybody uh, is uh, looking for an opportunity and can see uh, the possibility to invest in something, in a product, in a house, or in gold, or in any other product that which is available in the market, hmm? and they believe that this is a process that mm, will never end, well, we are also pushing the bubble uh, to explode. And this is what usually happens when, when the, the flow of money suddenly stops, when nobody can buy a new apartment or nobody can buy a new a stock from a certain company. At that moment, mm, flows stops, okay, run out, and this situation, this scheme, falls apart. So this is the end of the the bubble, and uh, somebody got a lot of money, but most people lost its uh, investment. And this is what usually happens when you are not very familiar with a certain kind of market. Mm -hmm. We are talking to Dr. Carlos Puente, a well-known international lawyer and economic political analyst.